yeah, I was interested in like the hearing more a bit more about your process of texture hunting for you. You know, like when you go out on your walk, you know, how do you where do you go? How what's the process of finding them? And then, but also because the interesting thing about the photographs is like we see them uh, from a distance, obviously, but I, I'm never sure. Are you getting in there and like really like touching? You know, what, <laughs> what else happens? Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess uh, I've, I've always done this and I don't think I made a connection to it sort of formally, I guess, um, until I started sort of talking publicly about my skin picking because I hadn't really made the connection that I've always taken these sorts of photos all the way along before I was sort of making stuff more um, more sort of consciously, I guess. So my phone is always full of these textures that I'm attracted to. And um, yeah, so that's been with me, I don't know, like 20 years, maybe so ever since I've had a mobile phone, I've been taking, you know, with a, with a camera on it. So they're never anything, you know, they're not taken on any fancy camera or anything. It's much more about just using what's in my pocket. And um, I guess when things got uh, kind of all went AWOL last year, last year with the pandemic, I I didn't feel able to draw and I kind of lost the, the, the drawing that I was doing, which were the compulsive charcoal drawings of the train. I suddenly wasn't commuting, so I wasn't drawing and my anxiety kind of sort of skyrocketed and then plummeted and I was just in this sort of very odd place. And I think this, because this is very familiar to me as a way of um, sort of grounding myself, I guess, I, I just started doing this on lockdown walks and that... Um, I found immediately it, it kind of stabilizes my anxiety, I guess, but also it's a very um, repetitive compulsive thing. So my process is really simple. I, I wander out of the house and sometimes they're right in front of me. You know, the, the, all of the photos that you're actually showing at the Autos were in three streets near my house, you know, so they're tiny details on the ends of people's gateposts or, you know, it's a, a bit of bark in a, a walk in, in a, a, a wood that was uh, in Sydenham near, near where I was living at the time or it's kind of just um, and I think there's a sort of real sense of flow and and being in the moment which which I feel very quickly that you know my, my head might be spiraling off with lots of thoughts but actually it's it helps me just kind of focus on this and then this and then this and then this and I think that sort of um, slow process of just really paying attention um, becomes very useful and powerful quite quickly for me so they might begin with a, with a sort of fascination for a particular color so sometimes I would notice this kind of aqua green that I was noticing in lichen and then I was noticing it in a, in a bit of peeling paint on someone's house and then it would be found again on a gatepost in the park and you know that sort of threading together of little textures and and really sort of focusing in um because I have this uh sense of the 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 skin picking disorder that I I manage every day is really about that scrutiny with my own body and that's a very challenging thing you know that my eye will go to particular things on my body so for me to kind of push that outwards and refocus it into scrutinizing other textures um is, is really useful so yeah and they they just accumulate as I go along I've got many I don't even know how many thousands and thousands and thousands my phone is often full uh and I'm I'm having to sort of download these these this huge number of textures but they're they're sort of a, a, a constant thing so every day I'm I'm taking these sorts of images the big question is 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 there a texture as your screensaver or is it the one you love there is actually on my on my iPad, which is in the other room, the bright green. Uh, in fact, it's one of the images I've chosen for the Autos exhibition. It's it's a, a, a it's a door that I noticed on some someone's kind of gate, I think, to their house, and it's bright green with pale blue, with bright blue sort of coming through it, where someone's painted a door two colours, but all the green is kind of peeling off, and it's this incredible sharp kind of green and I love that um, the light is falling on it in a particular way and it's also I always make this joke when I'm out because uh, my, my wife is always like come on you're always stopping and taking photos but I say to her you know like the light in a particular moment is that's the moment I have to capture it because it won't look like that the next time I walk past it or it won't you know or it will look different the next time I walk past it so if there is this particular kind of play of light I'm like I have to catch it now you know because it will look different tomorrow so or in 10 minutes so <laughs> um, yeah and that I think that's my favorite 
uh, texture at the moment. But you know, there's, they, they it, it fluctuates. So sometimes it's peeling paint for days, and that's what I'm going for. But other times it's um, it's lichen, or it's um, you know, it's a um, a load of bark, or it's weird kind of textures. I'm, I've recently relocated to the seaside, so now I'm taking pictures of dead jellyfish and uh, bits of seaweed on the beach and things that you know are drawing my attention in, in a new way. And they sort of fuel my drawings as well. So I'm kind of yeah, gathering, hunter gathering is the right sort of phrase for it because it's just an accumulation. And do yeah. you, when you find the textures, do you, you photograph them, but do you also get in, is it sensory? Do you, is it tactile? Will you? It's not, which is quite interesting. Sometimes I'm, I get right up close. So I'm kind of often in a really strange position to kind of capture the photo or I'm on the ground or I'm low down or wherever it is. But yeah, they're not, it's not tactile, which is really interesting. I've never, I don't sort of touch the textures. I, 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 it's a it's a visual thing about tactility tactility is that the right word yeah. so yeah i feel like it's more about the the visual um absorption of it mm. So, yeah mm. yeah so interesting because i guess also all these things are really tied to like place and so yeah. where you are yeah really sort of um flavor your texture hunt and you know, yeah. I was imagining what would it be like if you went to like the city? And... Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, there's uh, being in South London for, you know, 20, 20 years, I was, I was often taking pictures of tiny bits of graffiti and things that, you know, urban textures that, that are in those places or, you know, the grime that has accumulated at the side of the tube. There were some amazing textures at, um, I can't remember which station it is. It might be Bank, where some huge kind of billboards have been taken down, and there are these kind of almost they do actually look like charcoal drawings or etchings, and they're these huge, dirty kind of marks across the tube wall. So I, I think it is just about it is about place and kind of noticing what's right here. What what can my attention be drawn to at this particular point? And that that is a really um, still I find that very stimulating for my creative process. It's it's a it's a you know it's about my body my experience in this place and how does that then sort of how do I take those things on so yeah it's mm. it, it, it's just a, a noticing and a slowing down which which I find really helpful it was interesting when you were saying touching on some things there about um I guess that your your body and our body's relationship to then yeah. textures because I um yeah, I think I think a lot of people do, and I know that myself. When I see those interesting textures, you are attracted to them. And, and thinking about the body, you know, there are a whole lot of connotations to you know your, um, uh, you know, your aging. Yeah. Um, to yeah. kind of skin the way. Yeah. I, I, skin's skin's a big thing, I think, because the skin picking is is such a you know it's a lifelong experience for me I've 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 always had this awareness of of texture on me and I, I I'm I know so yeah I'm aging and I'm aware of the change of my body and the change of that sensation I guess and also finding that those those feelings we have in the that are part of us are constantly evolving constantly shifting there's this kind of it's a it's a sort of gentle thing but sometimes it can be quite emotional and quite difficult and I think that's um yeah, that's kind of in there too. That I'm I'm aware of those challenging things I feel about my body that are you know by sort of placing by really shifting my awareness to that particular place outside of my body. I'm looking at this thing right now, and there is a there is a constant relationship to it. I feel. Mm. And it reminds me of um, you know a lot of people are interested in ruins as well and yeah. um, architectural ruins, and I don't know whether there's something in that about kind of. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're, when we're living in, especially in urban spaces where you're increasingly surrounded by kind of steel and glass, yeah. these kind of um, uh, infallible sort of buildings. Yeah. When you come across sort of degradation and yeah. yeah, like the things that you're capturing, you know, it's like, it's almost like a reminder that the world is, um, yeah. will not last forever. Yeah, yeah. And that these these sort of um, presences and traces, I think, are really interesting. The sense of trace that things have things have been there, or they've moved, or they've been left. You know, they've been abandoned. And even like you know, a, t a tiny bit on someone's door frame where they've not repainted it. I think that you know, there's a lovely sort of history to that, and there's a lovely, 
you know, this could be anywhere, really. We experience, you know, these textures could be anywhere, but they happen to be right in front of your body at that point. And, and yes, I, I also have this weird sort of, I remember where I've taken them. They're also like a sort of visual catalogue of, I can look back at a texture from 10 years ago and, and I do recall, oh yeah, I remember I was in that place taking that photo at that point, you know, and I was 10 years younger and I was, <laughs> I wonder how I was feeling that day. And, you know, there, there's a, there's a sort of, um, yeah, emotional history to it as well of, of feelings that have gone with gathering at that point so yeah I think it's a, it's a human thing isn't it to, to notice and to pay attention to the, ch the stuff that's around us nature too being out in nature has has been so important during the pandemic you know I feel like at the outside has become so much more important to us we're aware once our once those restrictions are in place you become you know and restrictions for all kinds of reasons you become very conscious that that, that can be a powerful way to, to sort of reconnect yeah definitely and um, so then I guess it's I think want to think a bit about the then because you that as a practice and that um has obviously been a sort of private practice for many years yeah but then during the pandemic you've kind of then opened up that to um you know using digital spaces like Instagram Twitter to yeah. then kind of share it and encourage other people to kind of yeah and, and, you know, there's a whole community once you sort of put some feelers out. I, I was I've been so happy and delighted that people are joining in from all, all, all parts of the world. really. And, you know, that I use a hashtag texture hunter gatherer, which has got its own momentum. You know, that I think that that sort of becomes a way people are tagging what they're doing. And, you know, I've also met a load of new people online through that of connecting with others that are finding a bit of solace in small a small process every day um particularly during lockdown so i had people from japan taking part and you know norfolk and you know, it's all parts of the, the world and the, and the country so it's not just you know it becomes a, a, a way to connect with others that are that are in the same you know we're in the same situation this global situation so um, that's been really joyous and it, you know it's it's there every day so I, I can check my Twitter feed this morning and people have joined in today so and I'll do the same today so you know and, and sh having a, a conversation with someone who's who's having that same experience of I noticed this today and sharing it becomes a yeah communal activity even though you're on your own doing these doing this very sort of private thing and it's a private notice it becomes a a, a shared experience which I think is is wonderful because it you know it, it, it's making gentle connections with others um, that are benefiting from it too. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and how do you find, you know, places like Instagram and Twitter, um, how, how are they for kind of sharing and discussing things like text on together? Because they, those are kind of quite immediate, like embodied experiences. Um, and so how, how does that sort of translate then to the digital space? Do you find there kind of restrictions or? Um... I think it, I think it's opened up. I've certainly connected with more, more kind of communities on there. You know, there's a whole load of people that are fascinated with rust. There's a whole load of people that are fascinated with lichen, you know, so actually I've, I've, I'm now, you know, pooling more knowledge and inspiration from, from other images people are taking. So, you know, it's, it's made me, broaden my my sort of connections I guess but the digital space I think is really helpful I've always found that a useful way to connect particularly because you know the when I started sharing about compulsive skin picking there was such limited information on online and and actually people weren't communicating about it very much and that has radically changed so you know people are drawing about the condition and um, writing poetry and, and you know so textures as part of that become a, another bit of that community expanding and I think I the more we can share ways to manage you know a, a challenging condition with other different creative routes I think the, the better it is and that digital media means people are in communities across the world are connecting so that that's astonishing and wonderful you know that's where this technology has really changed um the sort of isolation I used to feel with the condition, I feel now that, you know, there's a whole community of people I've been able to connect with through Instagram, Twitter, and, and being online. So, mm. yeah, sharing knowledge is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just incredible the way that the project has 
the hashtag has just taken off. And like you said, it's got a life of its own. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think you've always been really adept at using social media for your work um, and advo advocacy work as well as your art yeah. practice. Um, so, yeah, but, but this is just really kind of, it's beautifully kind of generous and open. And like you say, it will just kind of, you know, keep going, I expect for years to come. Um, and I, I was wondering, yeah, do you have any ideas kind of where it will go? Um, in the future? I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. Other other friends on Twitter who have been taking part all year have made photo books or they've collated them into, you know, that there's a, a particularly an artist I, I've connected through through the pandemic and she created hers into an amazing kind of concertina photo book. So, you know, people have had creative departures for it. I mean, personally, I feel like I'm I'm sort of at this tipping point of starting new work because I'm in a new place and I'm drawing differently and I'm sort of absorbing new ideas. And I, I, I don't know, I feel like the textures have all changed because I'm now in a seaside location. So I'm, I feel that personally, my practice is, it, it adapts to where I am and what I'm doing and my location and my space. And, you know, I can't, I won't be traveling on the tube um, anymore because I'm not living in the city. So my composite charcoal drawings may have kind of completed, which has sort of been a strange grief really, I guess, because that was such a massive part of my life for five years. Um, you know, and suddenly this, this huge transformative pandemic means I'm not commuting, I'm not drawing on the train in the same way. So I'm I'm sort of at this new point and I think the texture hunter-gatherer thing is such a good connection, sort of, you know, without really even thinking about it, it just transposes to the new thing and I find, a, a, I'll hopefully find a new direction with it. Um, but community-wise, I feel, I don't know, people are taking it into their own ideas. Uh, another artist I know is working with ice and, and freezing textures. So, you know, there's there's sort of interesting departures that people have, have taken through this, through the pandemic and letting letting it fuel new ideas. And I think that's what it's all about, really, that it's a, it's a grounding place, but it's also a really simple thing that can initiate ideas. Um, so hopefully, though, I don't know, I don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> uh, I'll find out. <laughs> I'll find out by doing it. I'm not sure. Come back to you in two years' time. <laughs> yeah. And I will have crafted a, I don't know, I made a great big thing out of etchings of, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, do you, are you so interesting to hear about what other people are doing um, and how yeah. they develop their own projects from it? Well, yeah. Do you feel any kind of responsibility to the community that you started? I mean, what, how does that feel? Uh, it's got its own life. No, I think, I, you know, there's, I've got uh, a friend in um, who relocated to Helsinki uh, during the pandemic. He's an academic. He's been taking photos of ice where he's, where he's living and like he's, he's, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different sort of connotations for it. Right. So it's, it is about the space and the place that the person's in. And I just think it has its own, it has its own life and people people are doing this regardless of the hashtag it just is lovely that you know there's been a sort of meeting point I guess through that um and people that have been actively taking part and are still taking part there's definitely a sort of lovely flow of connection every day um and people joining in so yeah I hope that will just continue and evolve in its own way I don't know <laughs> we'll see